Hello everyone and welcome to Sam Peral's third Gin Cocktail Happy Hour during my month of June, my 30 day salute to all things gin during the month of June. So on this 19th day of June, I'll be making four summer ready gin cocktails based on the two Irish gin products that I tasted earlier this week. They're very exotic, very easy drinking, drum shambo, gunpowder, Irish gin, and the very complex, absolutely delicious, short crushed Irish craft gin. Now if you missed either of my virtual tasting videos this week, and or any of my videos from the first two weeks of June, don't despair. All of these are posted and easily found on my Song for All Facebook page, or you can check out Song for All on YouTube. Okay, so for this live event, very happy to have you all here. Happy to have you join me for this gin happy hour. For those of you that have tuned in before, you know that this is more like a happy 17 minutes of gin, um, and you get the gif. Okay, before I start mixing, just need to remind everyone that you need to be legal drinking age where you live to follow along with me today. So if you're not able yet to legally purchase and consume alcohol products where you live, then it's time to say goodbye. For everyone else, it's cocktail time. I'd also like to mention that in the spirit of being live, I've decided to not only make these cocktails live, but also to taste them for the very first time with all of you. So my reactions are going to be 100% authentic. Cocktail number one. Recipe comes straight from Drum Shambo themselves. Drum Shambo, Irish gin. Uh, the recipe can be found at www.drumshambogunpowderirishgin.com. If you can say that five times fast after having this cocktail, you need a second. Um, so all right, so we're going to start. Drum Shambo. And in the glass, we're going to add some ice cubes. There we go. Symphony. Two ounces of rum shambo, gunpowder Irish gin. And as I've said for the last little while, if you're measuring, if you're free pouring, it's always better, in my opinion, that a little more gin adds to the flavor rather than a little less. Okay, so next we're going to add 20 milliliters of fresh lime juice. Uh, there. Then we're going to add 20 milliliters of fresh grapefruit juice. And the idea behind this recipe is there's a lot of citral and floral notes, a lot of exotic flavors that I, that I talked about in the video. So that's kind of why the, I think this will be a good one to have. All right, then we're going to go with 10 milliliters of simple syrup. And simple syrup, for those of you that may not be familiar with the phrase, simple syrup is equal parts sugar and water that have been boiled and then left to cool. So, I'm going to add 10 milliliters or so, simple syrup. Then we're going to garnish with fresh mint. And I'm going to do a little, well, a little a big piece of grapefruit in there. We're going to give that a little stir. And the most important part, we're going to give it a taste. Cheers. A curious jackal. I love the way that citrus does work very well with the citrus notes of the gin. The gin's got a bit of a, a gunpowder tea, it's a green tea extract that's in that gin, and that plays really well with the mint and some of the herbal tones. Nice and refreshing. I like that one. Okay, next up, so gin cocktail courtesy of finecooking.com. Again, we're going to use the drum shambo. This is called the Pomegroni. So, in a rocks glass or a tumbler or whatever glass you have, to be quite honest, we're going to add some more ice. And it's up to you guys if you want to add seven cubes, five cubes, less is very to taste, uh, as they call it. Then I'm going to take one ounce of red vermouth. Next, we're going to add an ounce of Campari. Right in there. 
and we're going to take one ounce of gum shampoo. And two ounces, as you probably guessed by the name, pomegranate, two ounces of pomegranate juice. All right, so stir that up. Get everything, get everything melted up, all those flavors working together. I'm going to take some grated nutmeg, so just a pinch of grated nutmeg. Just kind of bring out that spiciness and the spice that's in the gin. A little bit of an orange twist. We give the twist a twist to kind of get those essential oils out. And there, one more little stir. And there you have the pomegranate. I'm not a big Negroni fan, so I'm very curious about this one. Savory. Juicy. I like that. That I would drink. Negronis, my wife likes the Negronis. I'm not such a Negroni fan. Okay, so, from Shambo, two cocktails with that. And now we're moving over to a gin that I recently just discovered. I saw it by Fluke at the LCBO here in Ontario. Uh, and as I said in my video review yesterday, this product is an absolute testament to small craft gin distillation. It's also an absolute bargain at $40.80 at the LCBO in Ontario for a gin of this caliber, of this quality, of this complexity. This is Short Cross from the north of our cross car near Downpatrick. And if you know Julia and Neville, who are my cousins, it's right near there. So, cocktail number three comes from the website aspiciesperspective.com. And very, very curious name. It's the Watermelon Basil Gin Cocktail. So, I'm guessing you've already figured out what it's made with. Okay, so we're going to take about four pre-cut, one and a half inch slices of watermelon. I'm going to put that right into a cocktail shaker. Next, we're going to add the equivalent of two chopped basil leaves, fresh basil. I always want to use fresh ingredients when making these cocktails. All right. Then I'm going to take just a pinch of salt. That in there. And then we're going to muddle that. And what you want is you want a bit of a soupy, mushy, smushy consistency. That, that is what we're looking for. So you really want to break down the watermelon. Maybe a little fibers. And I think, because I know this is riveting being live, we are just about there. Okay, so then we're going to take two ounces of our short cross gin. So, two ounces of short cross gin. We're going to take one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Again, fresh ingredients. It's always what you're looking for for your cocktail aficionados that are out there. You know, freshness is the bomb. And then after that, we're going to put a little bit of simple syrup. Put that over here. About a half an ounce of simple syrup. So. I'm not making it too sweet. And there is a little bit of sweetness already in that short crush gin. And it's not sugary sweetness. It comes from the clover that they use, which is grown natively around the estate. Um, as I said in, uh, in the Gramshambo video about Irish gins, one of the things that's unique about Irish gins is they all have at least some local component to them. So with Gramshambo, they're using a wildflower um, that grows on the, on the property around Shed Distillery, and that's what's in there. Short cross, they're using everything that grows around their place. They've got all kinds of stuff. So definitely check out the video. Um, you know, when David and Fiona, who I did get a chance to speak with, were talking about reinventing where the Irish gin can be, that's what they've done here. So they've used clover. First time I've ever had clover that I can recall in any, in any kind of drink, naturally. And it gives this almost vanilla, kind of sweet-esque sense to it. All right, so we've done all that. Now, what we're going to do is we got to put the drum shampoo in there. No, we didn't. So we're going to add some, we're going to add the drum shampoo. 
So two ounces of... Uh, short oh, I did, crust. I did put it in there. That's not, that's not that crazy. It's like short crust. Short crust. So I'm not going to put the shadow on. Paul, what are you doing? Too excited about the short crust. So we did add the short crust, folks. This is why it's live. This is how you know it's live. So we've done all that. We're going to add ice to this now. See, I get too excited about the short crust. I'm going to get off topic. For those of you that know me, you know I like to talk. Oh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it a shake. I don't go too crazy because my shaker leaks. So I'm going to get it in there. I'm going to get it all mixed and married up. All right. So this was chilled beforehand. I think it's about 35 degrees of humidity here just east of Ottawa. So it doesn't look chilled, but it was chilled. I'm going to pour that in. It's got this nice, you can see you get the watermelon color comes through. It's very summery looking. Put all that goodness over there. Come on. All right. Add some more ice. And then we're going to take two sticks of watermelon for garnish and basil leaf. I'm going to give that a little stir. And we're going to go in. That is very, very nice. That is very, very nice. Dave, hello. Thank you for tuning in, Dave. Thank you for the message. All right, that is very, very nice. Why did I put that back on there? I don't want to share that with anybody. All right. So, for those of you who weren't able to watch my video uh, yesterday, you definitely should check it out. For those of you that did, as I said earlier, you know that I had the very good fortune uh, of being able to connect with Fiona and David, uh, who are the founders of uh, Radiman Estate Distillery in Crosscar, uh, and Radiman is who produces Short Cross. I mentioned to, uh, to both of them yesterday when I was talking to them that I do these live gin cocktail uh, happy hours on Fridays, and you know I asked if they had one specific product recommend or recipe uh, recipe recommendation for this. So without hesitation, David said to me right away, "You've got to make the perfect summer gin and tonic." So right from the founders themselves using their marvelous short cross gin. Here is the perfect summer gin and tonic. Now, apropos, considering summer is tomorrow. So, in a Copa style glass or a tumbler, I'm faking it over in a Chardonnay glass. That's what I got, but kind of you want that wide mouth thing, or again, use whatever you've got. So, we're going to add two frozen cubes of fresh orange. We're going to add two sprigs of fresh mint. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a smush. Now, you don't want to break the glass, but you do want to kind of break things down. And you want to, as David said, I believe he called it, you want to give it a bash. And you want to get all those essential oils from the, from the basil going. You want to get the, uh, or the mint, sorry. And you want to get the orange broken out. Okay. Next, we're going to add some ice. And then we're going to add a coarse a short cross. Pork. And this is an ounce and a half of the short cross is what we're going to be adding. And then for those of you that saw my note on uh, my note on tonic two weeks ago, tonics can play a very big part in your drink. So you know if you have a drink, a mixed drink, and you had one type of tonic that's in there or served to you and you didn't enjoy it, that doesn't mean you didn't like the gin. It's it likely the tonic that was the that was the culprit. So David was, was highly recommending Fever Tree Elderflower. Of course, there's Elderflower in here, one of the many ingredients that goes into it. So again, we're playing with flavor with flavor. There's elderberries in there as well. So an ounce and a, an ounce and a half of the, I see Irish coming out to me. Uh, that's the ounce and a half of short cross that we put in there. And we're gonna go with three ounces of the Fever Tree. I'm not gonna try and worry too much about exact force. Gin, but we will on the fever. Makes sense, fever tree. Premium tonic. Rockstar premium gin. There we go. Okay, we're going to take a little fresh mince break and give it a little twist. 
straighten it out to make it nice. Put that in there. I'm going to give it a little stir. And I'm going to go in, have a taste to my friends in Crossgar for the perfect summer gin and tonic. Sanji. I'm going to have to buy more shortcuts. <laughs> my wife is behind the camera. That is just absolutely wonderful. That is so, David, that, if you're watching, that's summer in a glass. To everybody else that watches this either live or on the replay, seriously. I know it's like in 40 degrees with humidity on. Run, don't walk. Get this, make this. Short cross Irish gin. You, will not, you cannot go wrong. And you want to make this perfect GMT. Again, quality products, fever tree. I see why he recommends that. Uh, I'm not supporting you. Over there. Uh, but yeah, absolutely lovely. It's going to be a lot of those this weekend. All right. So there you have it. Four easy, summer ready, and just in time for Ontario heat wave gin cocktails based on two fantastic but very different Irish gins. Again, the gunpowder, very popular. Uh, very exotic, using a lot of ingredients from around the world. Uh, and then we have the North of Ireland's first ever craft distilled gin, small batches, just absolutely phenomenal stuff. So happy I saw that. Wow. Wow. Okay, and so with Father's Day and Sunday, let me know which gin cocktail you're making. If it's one of mine that I've showcased here today, if it's one of the ones that I've done before, or something else that you've come up with on your end. Send me your picks and let me know what you're making for death. But now we're going to move on to question time. I've got three for you that have come in. Some of these were, were the same, so down to three. First question. Why do you like gin so much and what is your favorite and why is it your favorite spirit? I don't know that it's my favorite spirit, I'll be quite honest. As a sommelier, um, I, I, you know, I really appreciate basically all of them. I don't think that there's one that I really don't enjoy. I mean, I, I, I like gin very much, I like tequila very much, whiskey, of course. What really strikes me about gin is two things. It's a, there's a gin craze worldwide, but the average person that I've come across here in Canada really doesn't, they really don't appreciate gin that much. So that's why I do gin. Secondly, I like that gin, or should I say well-made gin, and that's a, that's a key thing, that well-made gin comes off as very light and crisp and refreshing. Uh, there's a lot of botanicals, and you know you can drink it in many different ways. So that's why I like gin. That's why I do gin. Uh, my favorite? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I really like it, but I like all spirits. Number two, I had this one a few times. Do I have to only enjoy gin in a cocktail? Well, doing cocktails today, and gin is very popular in cocktails. The answer, the short answer to that is no. Uh, I will be very honest. You could take either one of these products and you know have them as a digestif. And just, you know, a little sipper. 46% uh, in the short cross, and the Grove Shamble comes in at, at 43. So, you know, gin is not, uh, is not a light alcohol. You don't want to be doing shots with, with gin for a whole bunch of reasons. But no, you can definitely have gin on its own. And I like it as a bit of a dish as stiff. And question number three. You've talked about gin from other countries, but doesn't Canada have good gin? Well, that's a great question, very timely question, because Next week is my salute to Canadian gin. And let me tell you, you're not going to want to miss one moment of June next week. I've got some phenomenal products lined up. Um, so make sure you're following next week. So folks, as we wrap it up today, I do hope you've all enjoyed our time together. And I sincerely thank you all very much for tuning in today and for following along all throughout June. I want to thank Fiona and David again for their candid conversation with me um, so I could learn more about Short Cross. If you're, when you're in North, the north of Ireland, cross car, that's where you gotta go. Tell the cabbie, on the cross car. Don't forget, next Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be back here live on Facebook for my final gin cocktail happy hour in the month of June. And I'll be preparing products once again from the Canadian gin products that I taste next week. And I'll also be answering some more of your gin-related questions. So fire those in. Uh, I like having those. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Don't forget, very important, make sure to like and follow Song For All on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Share with your family and friends. 
enjoy. Gin